Hey guys and welcome to Heart Gastro. So in today's video we'll be exploring what is a fibrinogen blood test. So let's get started. So before we get into the specifics of a fibrinogen blood test itself, let's talk a little bit about what you can expect when your doctor orders a fibrinogen blood test for you. So a fibrinogen blood test is a simple test that can be done at your closest laboratory. No special preparation is needed for this blood test, which means you don't have to fast so you can eat and drink as usual before the test. During the test, a blood sample will be collected from you, which means a needle will be inserted into a vein, usually in your arm, to draw out some blood into a blue top or citrate blood tube. This blood tube is then sent to a laboratory where it is analyzed and resulted. So what is a fibrinogen blood test? A fibrinogen blood test measures the level of fibrinogen in your blood. Fibrinogen, also known as factor 1, is a protein produced by the liver that plays a crucial role in blood clotting. So when you have an injury that causes bleeding, fibrinogen is converted into fibrin by the action of an enzyme called thrombin. Fibrin then forms a clot by weaving through the platelets, which are small blood cells, at the site of the injury to stop the bleeding. So if we take a closer look at this image down here at the bottom of my screen, we see the site of injury here and the red blood cells spilling out, which means that there's an active bleeding process occurring. And then we see the platelets aggregating, which means they are clumping together. And then we have fibrinogen that becomes fibrin through that enzyme called thrombin. And the fibrin here rushes to that point of injury to form a clot and to prevent any further bleeding from occurring. So now that we know what fibrinogen is and what the fibrinogen blood test is all about, let's talk a little bit about why doctors may order this blood test. So a fibrinogen blood test is often ordered for the following reasons. Number one is to evaluate clotting disorders. So if you have symptoms of a bleeding or a clotting disorder, such as frequent nosebleeds, which is known as epistaxis, easy bruising, or excessive bleeding after surgery, your doctor may order a fibrinogen blood test. Number two is to monitor the liver function. So since fibrinogen is produced by the liver, low levels might indicate liver disease. So if a patient has liver cirrhosis or hepatitis or perhaps liver cancer, the fibrinogen levels will be very low in the blood and this actually alerts us to the fact that our liver might be in trouble. So number three is to assess cardiovascular disease. So high fibrinogen levels have been associated with increased risk of cardiovascular disease, such as heart attacks or strokes. Another reason doctors may order this test is during pregnancy. So in some cases, the test may be ordered during pregnancy to check for certain complications, such as preeclampsia or placental abruption. And the final reason this test may be ordered is to monitor fibrinolytic therapy. So a fibrinogen test is also used to monitor people who are receiving treatment with fibrinolytic drugs, which break down clots that may be occurring in the body. So moving along, let's explore the normal ranges of fibrinogen in the body. So the normal range of fibrinogen is 200 to 400 milligrams per deciliter, or this may also be expressed as 2 to 4 grams per liter on your blood report test. So abnormally high fibrinogen levels is also called hyperfibrinogenemia and is a condition where fibrinogen levels in the blood are elevated beyond the normal range, typically above 400 milligrams per deciliter. Abnormally low fibrinogen levels is a condition known as hypofibrinogenemia and can be a sign of several underlying health issues. So fibrinogen levels are typically considered low when they fall below 150 milligrams per deciliter. So what are the causes of abnormally high fibrinogen levels? 
So coming in at number one, we have inflammation. So fibrinogen is an acute phase reactant, meaning its levels rise in response to inflammation in the body. So any conditions such as infections or autoimmune diseases and chronic inflammatory disorders can cause high fibrinogen levels. So any sort of inflammation or infection in the body will lead to high fibrinogen levels. So it's also quite a helpful tool to alert us to an inflammatory process occurring inside the body. Coming in at number two, we have cardiovascular disease. So elevated fibrinogen is associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular diseases like heart attacks and strokes. So high levels can also contribute to atherosclerosis, where plaque builds up in the arteries. At number three, we have pregnancy. So fibrinogen levels naturally increase during pregnancy as part of the body's preparation for childbirth to prevent excessive bleeding during the birthing process. So this will also cause a high level of fibrinogen on a blood test. Coming in at number four, we have cancer. So certain cancers, particularly those affecting the liver, the lungs and the kidneys, can cause elevated fibrinogen levels on a blood test. At number five, we have smoking. So this is a well-known risk factor for increased fibrinogen levels, contributing to the overall inflammatory state of the body in people who smoke chronically. At number six, we have obesity. So obesity is linked to higher fibrinogen levels due to its association with chronic low-grade inflammation. And finally, at number seven, we have kidney disease. So especially in cases of chronic kidney disease, which can lead to very elevated levels of fibrinogen, as the kidneys play a role in managing the body's inflammatory response. So these are all the different causes for high fibrinogen levels to appear on your blood test. So now let's explore some causes for abnormally low fibrinogen levels. So coming in at number one, we have liver disease. So as mentioned in the previous slides, the liver is responsible for producing fibrinogen. And conditions that affect the liver function, such as liver cirrhosis, hepatitis, or liver failure, can lead to decreased production of fibrinogen, meaning that we'll have lower levels in the blood. At number two, we have disseminated intravascular coagulation, or disease known as DIC. So DIC is a serious condition where blood clots form throughout the body in the body's small blood vessels. This excessive clotting consumes clotting factors, including fibrinogen, leading to low levels in the blood and an increased risk of bleeding. At number three, we have congenital fibrinogen deficiencies. So some individuals are born with inherited disorders that cause low fibrinogen levels, and these include a fibrinogenemia, which is the complete absence of fibrinogen, and hypofibrinogenemia, which means reduced levels of fibrinogen in the blood. Coming in at number four, we have severe bleeding or trauma. So in cases of significant blood loss or trauma, fibrinogen may be consumed rapidly leading to lower levels in the blood. At number five, we have malnutrition. So severe malnutrition or protein deficiency can impair the liver's ability to produce enough fibrinogen, leading to abnormally low levels of fibrinogen in the blood. And finally, number six, which is certain medications. So some drugs, such as certain chemotherapy agents or anticoagulants, may lower fibrinogen levels. So as we have just seen, the fibrinogen test is a versatile diagnostic tool that provides critical insights into a wide range of health conditions, from bleeding and clotting disorders to cardiovascular risk and inflammatory diseases. Its ability to help diagnose, monitor, and manage these conditions makes it an essential test in many clinical settings. And that brings us to the end of this video. 
So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this video very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share this video with some of your friends in the medical community. So I've just recently signed up for Buy Me A Coffee. So if you want to encourage me to do even more or say thanks for all the free information you've received today on my channel, you can buy me a coffee by clicking in the description box below. Take care and have a wonderful day further. Bye for now.